Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of ax plus b over bx plus a equals x squared, and we're going to be solving for f. Particularly, we want to look at the value of f of 1. Great, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to solve for f, so I want to get something like f of x. So let's go ahead and turn this complicated expression into something simple. How about u? Okay, by setting it equal to u, I'm assuming that ax plus b over bx plus a is equal to u. And then from here, let's go ahead and try to solve for x. Then we can go ahead and put it on the right-hand side or just substitute. So from here, we get ax plus b equals bux or ubx, however you want to write it, as long as you keep the x at the end, plus au. Now our goal is to solve for x, so let's go ahead and put the x terms together. We're going to bring this over here to the left, ax minus ubx, and then that's going to equal au minus b. And then take out the x, that's going to give you a minus ub, or I guess BU would probably be more me meaningful. Let's write it as BU. I could also write it as BU here. And then let's set it equal to AU minus B. And then from here, we want to isolate X. Let's divide both sides by A minus BU. So that's going to be AU minus B divided by A minus BU. Awesome. So if you replace X with that on the left, this expression, the whole thing turns into U. Now, you don't have to check that, you don't have to check that you because it's you, but if you really want to do, you can go ahead and replace x with that and verify the result. Uh, as long as you didn't make any mistakes or we didn't make any mistakes, this should work. So that's x, and we're going to plug it in on the right-hand side. So this is going to be the function now expressed uh, with u. On the right-hand side, we have x squared, so it's going to be a u minus b divided by a minus bu. I could also write this as negative u, bu plus a, writing the variable first, because in this case, remember, the variable is u. And we're going to square this. Since we don't want to stick with or stick to <laughs> this variable, uh, use x generally, right? We can always replace u with x. And again, that x is not the same as this x, because we could use different x's for different things, right? So now this becomes f of x equals ax minus b divided by negative bx plus a, and the whole thing is just squared. So that's what how we can express f of or f as f of x. Uh, it, the, these two functions should serve the same purpose. If you replace x with certain values on both, uh, they should be give you the same results. But since our goal is to solve for f of 1, let's go ahead and replace x with 1. That gives you f of 1 equals, now I'm going to go ahead and replace x with 1. Now be careful because there seems to be a lot of variables, but a and b are kind of like given numbers. x is our independent variable, okay? Something we can control. So now x is 1, it's going to be a minus b divided by negative b plus a, and then the whole thing is squared. But notice that the numerator and the denominator are the same, just written differently. So it's going to be 1, and 1 squared is 1. So in other words, f of 1 is going to be 1 in this equation. But if you ask me how would you solve for f of x, here we go, we actually did both, right? Now, the first formula, is it's a formula, by the way, is better for most purposes because, let's say, they want us to find f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3. Once you find f of x, all you have to do is replace x with 1, 2, and 3, respectively, right? So it's kind of better, but if you're only going for f of 1, then uh, it's a little easier to do. And let me show you with the second method how easy that can be, okay? So it really depends on the question being asked. So if the question is asking for a particular value, sometimes, most of the time, there's a shortcut, okay? And that's what second method is all about. So one more time, we have f of ax plus b divided by bx plus a equals x squared. And then I'm trying to find f of 1. Okay, so 
wouldn't that be wouldn't that make sense though if I set this whole thing equal to one then just go for X that way it's a little easier because we're going for a numerical value now let's go ahead and set this equal to one this implies under certain conditions of course you don't want first of all you don't want a and B to be the same they should be different and I forgot to say that I apologize I think they should be different and the second you don't want BX plus a to be zero which means you know X cannot be negative a over B so under those conditions we can go ahead and solve it writing this as X plus B equals BX plus a and then putting the X terms on the same side a X minus BX equals a minus B and then finally factoring uh, out an X gives us something like this and at this point I think it's important to understand why uh, a and B should be equal or should be different I'm sorry they have to be different because uh, if they're not the same or if they are the same I don't know what I'm talking about okay never mind if a and B are the same then uh, you know we can't solve for X there's gonna be no solutions it's gonna be undefined or indeterminate or whatever you want to call it but it's not gonna work but if a and B are different then we get one from here what's that supposed to mean it means you're supposed to set x equal to 1 if you're trying to get f of 1 and that kind of makes sense because if you think about it we have f of ax plus b divided by bx plus a and think about it if you replace x with 1 you're going to get a plus b divided by b plus a which is 1 and that should give you what that should give you f of 1 so you're going to replace x with 1 that's going to give you f of 1 equals 1 squared which is 1 again we get the same answer so Great, so this basically solves the particular problem and the general problem. But in general, in general, how do you basically, you know, solve the problem in general? Like, why did we replace, maybe this is the question we, we, should, we can talk about, why did we replace x with that to get the f of x from the expression? So that kind of brings us to the concept of inverse functions. So in other words, we could call this a function, another function, the expression inside the parentheses, and consider this a composition of two functions. So if you call this g of x, then you'll get g of x equals ax plus b divided by bx plus a. Again, a and b are different, so this is not equal to 1. And, or if they're equal, does it become 1? I think, yeah, I think so. And uh, we'll have something weird because f a constant would be equal to x squared which is not right anyway so this is g of x and then now we have f of g of x this could be written as a composition of f and g at x and this notation is kind of better because whenever you have something like f of g equals another function h let's call this h of x by the way and suppose i'm trying to solve for g it would just make sense if we kind of uh, you know do another composition so we can get f from here and to isolate f we can just compose with g inverse on both sides because g composition g inverse is the identity function and f composition identity is the f itself so this would turn into f so in other words we have to do h composition g inverse and this is g and this is g inverse how do you find the inverse of a rational function just switch these around and then change the sign so in other words the inverse for a x plus b divided by bx plus a would be a x minus b divided by negative bx plus a. In other words, you switch these and switch the signs because when you switch a and a, you get the same thing. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.